All right, so we're gonna get started on this wall, on this door today. I think we're just gonna go back to white. And the reason is, I don't think, like, you have these really nice modern handles that we're putting on everything. And you can't see it with the darker door. Um, and then this wall, I know a lot of people like are excited about it and some are not. It is very mixed between you guys. But my thought is if I paint it and I hate it, I just paint it back white. So it's an easy fix. Um, it's not real brick. It's like that plastery fake brick. Cast. Cast brick, Bobby says. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start on that. I have two different colors. Now here's the thing with the colors that I picked. I'm gonna do a German schmear over them. So it doesn't have to be perfect and you're not really gonna see a ton of the color. It's still mostly going to be white. I just want some character of color popping through. So, we'll see. First time doing it. If I hate it, I just repaint it. I'm crazy for all you. You know it's what you say and what you do. So normally I don't tape or put too much paper down. Um, lately I've been doing it more just because we have this roll still. But I also knew with the German schmearing that would be messy. Um, I ended up getting two different colors for the brick. So I went with more of a like traditional red. But then I also got a lighter one. Um, I'm really happy. Overall I feel like in the end this gave a really pretty look. I was definitely nervous though the first time I put the paintbrush to the wall. This process actually went fairly easy. Um, I did this right away in the morning because my mom was actually going to be coming over um, and we were going to go to get our eyebrows done together and do some Halloween shopping and stuff like that. So I knew I wanted to get the paint on before she got to my house. That way we could go and by the time I got back I was able to work on the German schmear. So the nice thing about this is like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. White popping out wasn't a big deal. It just wanted a basic coverage over all of it. That way, when I went in with more of the texture technique, it just gave it some color that was able to pop through. I will say though this is definitely a trust the process situation because I was definitely a little overwhelmed by how bright the red was but yes I kept going I've learned that you have to trust the process and if you don't like it in the end that's one thing but stopping midway often you miss the magic that comes with just trusting yourself. Baby,
So it's been a couple of hours. This is all dry now when I got my eyebrows done with my mom so I don't feel like I have caterpillars on my eyes. But now we're gonna go in with this roll-on texture. I watched a couple YouTube videos and now we're going to, you gonna say hi? Hi. We're gonna do some German schmearing or something to that effect, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to do it? Okay. Alright, so supposedly all you're supposed to have to do is put this on the brush or the roller. Let's see. Roll it on. It seems thicker than what the girl had, so I wonder if I add water to it. If that'll be better, but we'll see. From everything we and then you take the putty knife. So as I was going, I didn't like how white it was. I wanted to see even more of the color. So I decided to bring some water over with a sponge. That way I could just clean off some of the bricks to give it a little bit more character. Um, and you'll also notice as I go on, using the roller like this was fine, but I felt like it wasn't picking up enough. And I found that using the putty knife and literally putting it on the wall and then using the roller to spread it out worked so much easier um, and I felt like gave it more of a look so I ended up changing to that technique it just it was almost too thick to really get on the roller well um, but the nice thing is like it doesn't have to be perfect like it's supposed to look distressed so if some areas are thicker than others it just adds to the whole concept of the character and everything of the wall Someone don't help you when someone don't help you through the rain when feelings don't matter and everything's nothing but a game game just know that I'm with you just know that I'm with you through it all and I'm gonna be there whenever you win or I will say though after I was all done with this Bobby liked it so much that he has now decided that he thinks I should do this to the entire house. Um, if you've been following for a while, the outside of our house is brick as well. Um, and I wanted to lime wash it to lighten it up. Um, lime wash is basically painting it white, but it's a um, better way to do it with brick. It is more like a stain, so it doesn't clog the pores of the brick and everything 
Um, but Bobby really loved the way this wall looks. So I might be doing this to the outside of the house. I haven't decided yet because honestly, this is a lot of work <laughs> to do the um, German schmear. So we will see. I agree with him that I think it would look really good. But I also know how much time it's going to take to do all of that. All right, moving on to the next day. I can't remember where I was this day. I might have been shopping for decor for this room. I honestly, though, cannot remember. Um, but Bobby was cleaning up some of the, like, caulk that was still on the wall from taking out the old baseboards so that we could put in the new ones. We, I've had a lot of people asking what type of baseboards we've been doing. So we have been doing one by four boards just painted in trim white just pure white um i really like the thickness of the one by fours but the modernness of how square it is so we have been using this all over the house um and we're not buying specific trim pieces for cost reasons it's a lot cheaper to buy a one by four than a trim piece that's been primed that there is practically the exact same thing. It is now time to start on the door, so I'm just going to take the handle and lock off real quick, sand it down. I think I'm just going to go white. I think it'll be easier, but you can see the walls are done, the trim's in. I love that wall, but I got to get that done. I end up asking Bobby to take the handles and everything off the door again. That way I could go in and not have to worry about like cutting around them. So I just put blue tape over the um, whatever the thing on the side is called. <laughs> uh, that way when I shut the door it wouldn't lock itself. And then I went in and sanded everything really well. As I was sanding a lot of the paint, um, the corners just peeled right up so it allowed me to peel it off. But when I did get done sanding as much as I could, I end up doing a layer of 
citrus strip over it and that works really really well to get the remainder of the paint in like all the little odds and ends the crevices and things like that um so definitely recommend citrus strip i've just started using citrus strip since being down here in florida and doing all of these projects and it really does come in handy in so many different ways and reasons so something I would highly, highly recommend. I just went in with a paintbrush and because this paint wasn't on here real well already, like I said, it was peeling. Um, I think I left it on for about an hour and that was it. And then to get it off, it is really, really, really important to um, get the citrus strip off when it's still wet. I had someone mention leaving it on overnight and it just works so much better. The issue is if it dries, it is so hard to get off. So I think it's better to leave it on if you saran wrap your areas. You can leave it on for a couple hours, but I wouldn't leave it on overnight. I would rather leave it on for a couple hours, take a layer off, put more on, um, and do it in layers than taking the chance of letting the citrus strip actually dry. Um, but after about an hour, I went in with a scraper, and then I ended up going in just with some water on a scrub brush to get the remainder of the pieces, and that worked well because it got in like the little cracks in areas that were a lot more difficult with a scraper. I also didn't want to gouge the door with the scraper. So I think I've decided just to let it go back to being a white door. There's a couple imperfections in the door that I think even once I sand it all down, it's not gonna look great stained. Um, so, at least all the peeling paint's off, so the new paint should take really, really well and we shouldn't have any issues. But, yeah, I don't think getting it down to raw and then staining it's really gonna work. But that's okay, it's still gonna look good. I made it through And then like I said, this is just white trim paint, just literally no tint, no nothing. Go to the store, grab the trim paint that says white. <laughs> that is what I am using on all my trim, all my doors, all my everything. I ended up doing about three coats on this store and that gave it a really good um, clean look to it. I do have to still go in and do the sides in the front. But I'm only doing one area at a time because I didn't want to just leave the door open. It's 
still really hot here in Florida, and leaving that door open would just kill all of our AC. Um, but next day again, you can see the doors all dry and clean. We got the hardware back on it. Um, and now I was going to work on hanging these pictures. So I took these pictures a couple weeks ago. We went to the park with the kids. And I just got a couple of really cute photos of them. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen these photos already. And ordered these picture frames off of Amazon. They were pretty inexpensive and printed the pictures from Walgreens in poster size. That's how I was able to get these. Um, I have used, what is it, solid wood frames. Um, you see them all over social media advertised and I loved them. However, what I don't love is you can't switch out the photos. Like you order them and that's just the way they are. So I knew for this situation, I wanted to do something that I could update this with the kids. I also did think ahead and I got four frames. Um, and I'm working with four frames because we do want to have another baby. And I didn't want to like center it out for three and then be completely lost um, when and if baby number four comes. So I did four frames and it's just one of each of the kids individually. And then my favorite photo of the three of them walking in the park next to the river. I just loved the way all of these turned out. This laser level is definitely a worthy investment if you are doing any type of home renovations. We have used this so many times in so many different ways. Some basic of just like us hanging pictures, but we've also been using it in the kitchen and with more like intense type um, renovation stuff. So you guys are doing any type of that. I highly recommend investing in a laser level because it makes life so, so much easier. And then I'm not playing the guessing game and everything. So I really, really like this purchase. Our tool collection has definitely, um, advanced since moving down here. It gives Bobby an excuse to buy some of his favorite tools, but he's been using them and it's been getting stuff done. So I definitely can't complain. Now, I did decide that after hanging them, I was going to take the level and I just put a command strip at the bottom. Um, that way, if they get knocked or whatever, I'm not worried about them getting all crooked and stuff. This way, I know they're level and I know they're not going to move. So definitely recommend a little bit of tape, a command strip, something like that behind your picture frames. That way, they're not moving on you. Definitely a win. Oh, and so I mentioned the other week when you saw me put this table together that it just didn't feel right. I felt like it needed a another shelf on it. Um, so I was at Home Goods on this day, just trying to get the last of the finishing touches and everything. So Bobby was welding in some support bars. That way we could put another shelf on it. And I have to say that made the biggest difference and looks so much better. Um, and this table, I want to say overall probably cost us about $200. That is about $30 for the legs off of Amazon. And then the wood pieces were, I think one was 80 and one was 60 for the live edge slabs um, from Lowe's. And then just the random 
wire and stuff that we added. I think overall it was about $200. So is it like uber cheap to make it on your own? No. Um, but when I was looking up tables like this, for tables that were smaller with just the top and not this lower shelf, they were running like four or $500. So I definitely think DIYing this and doing it by yourself Still saved us a lot of money. Um, I can't say it's a little $30 table. It definitely cost us a lot more than that to make it. But we also have like that pride of being like, okay, when people compliment us on the table, we made it. And there's something to be said about the value of that as well. Oh, definitely like the way this looks with the second shelf down here looks way nicer and then Bobby also got the new light up so now the fun fart part we get to decorate it So this is actually the rug from the master bathroom. I was originally just going to bring it out here to see if I liked the way it looked. And if I did, I was going to order another one. However, when I was at Lowe's, I found another runner that I absolutely loved for the bathroom. So this rug ends up staying out here in the front entry. I feel like it works perfectly. Um, and you will see in Friday's video the new rug in the bathroom, which I just love. So wasn't a, the original plan, but I think it definitely worked out in the end. I will say, though, decorating is my absolute favorite part of any of these transformations. It's what brings the whole thing together. When you do all these big projects, sometimes you just don't see the vision until everything's been brought out and put in its place. And I absolutely love how in the end, it all has that coastal yet organic feel to it. Kept me far away from my focus And to my heart I cannot lie Stars made of stars Up above made to fall Stars counting stars And they guide me through the dark Lonely days left in All right, so we're getting close to my favorite part in any makeover transformation video, the befores and the afters. There's just something about seeing everything. It's so easy to forget what something looked like in the beginning. So, oh, here's my little tip. If you have stickers that won't come off, any type of citrus essential oils makes it so much easier. So I was just putting some lemon on it. Plus, it smells really good. So it works out. Um... I did, you will notice when I put some of this stuff out that I didn't take the tags off right away, um, like the baskets and stuff, and that is only because I didn't know if I was going to like it. Um, I did end up actually keeping everything. All of this is all from home goods, so I kept everything, even though I didn't end up liking this taller plant here. I just didn't like how it covered up some of the photos, so I ended up moving that. But I did keep it because I figured I will be able to find somewhere in the house to use it. Especially like right now, we're not even close to being done with fully decorating this house. We still have a fireplace to put in, built-ins to put in, our kitchen to put in. So I knew I could be able to find it somewhere. But let's get into these befores and afters. 
If you're new here, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, and leave a comment down below. But let's do this. more than this You're the fire, you're 